Hello and welcome to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. I'm here today in KLM's Crown Lounge, not because I'm flying KLM, but because I'm flying Design Airline of the Year 2023 for Asia, China Airlines. Follow me as I explore why this airline ranked so highly in our awards last year. So I started my trip from Amsterdam, one of China Airlines European destinations. And where better to overnight than the Citizen M Hotel, which is affordable, fun and has these great runway and apron views. For this flight, I was headed to Osaka for a week-long Japan trip and China Airlines offers pretty easy connections to many Asian destinations, many of which are flown on the carrier's wide-body fleet, but more of that later. The hotel was just a short walk from the terminal, which was the busiest I've ever seen it, even on a Saturday at 8am. The check-in area for China Airlines was pretty easy to find and business class was clearly identified as sky priority. The check-in process took just minutes and before we knew it we were encouraged to go airside. However, Amsterdam still hasn't got to grips with the security lines which took forever to get through, albeit the queues separated upstairs and business class passengers were given priority. After getting our first glimpse of the aircraft at the F gates, we headed to the KLM Crown Lounge for a quick coffee and a snack before the flight. The lounge is split across two floors and our favourite is the top floor which is always quieter and has a brighter interior. There's lots of design touches here, from the route map ceiling lights to the Dutch mountain, which spans the two floors. There is also a sky deck which offers commanding views of Schiphol's apron, although it was closed when we visited. After leaving the lounge, passing through the hundreds of Delft houses on the way, we headed to the aircraft gate. China Airlines has a really elegant livery, featuring a plum blossom on the tail which is actually hand-painted and is pretty striking on the A350. While boarding was on time, we were able to board a few minutes before the others to see the cabin in all its glory. first impressions, China Airlines interiors are really striking. There's a bit of a love it or hate it moment when it comes to the persimmon wood veneer which adorns most of the cabin. But there is one thing for sure, this is anything but ordinary.
The A350 takes the persimmon wood to new levels, with interpretations of it on the seat shells and the carpet too. In business class, you'll find 32 seats in a 1x2x1 configuration, and these are some of the most spacious you can get, with wide seats, great seat pitch and unrestricted footwells. These seats certainly rank highly for me, and the design elements and touches China Airlines have adopted take them to new levels, with a dragon claw lamp being the signature stamp on a glorious design. The seats also feature hints of blue, an auspicious colour in Taiwan, and there are lots of soundproofing materials across the suite which features an intuitive seat control. The bifolding table is huge as well and slides up out of the way of your legs for when you sleep. To the side are two storage units, one deeper one featuring charging points, albeit there's no USB-C charging here, and a shallower one perfect for amenity kits and documents. To the other side is a raisable armrest, which also features storage for either headphones or water. Because of the reflective nature of the seat shell, the cabin actually feels bright, even though it's incredibly private. Welcome drinks were served on coasters, which featured a range of ink designs. Sadly, no champagne was offered until after takeoff, a cost-saving initiative taken by quite a few airlines of late. After the welcome drink, hot towels were offered as well, and we were introduced to the menu, albeit we decided to pre-order our dishes, a service which China Airlines offers to all of its guests in business class. While the airline doesn't offer pyjamas, a bit of a shortcoming in comparison to competitor Eva Air, they do offer slippers. On this flight, sadly, we had decent but not the best noise cancelling headphones, something the 777 fleet currently offers. Love the attention to detail, including the blue headphone jack. The entertainment is well designed as well, and the hand controller is pretty intuitive. There are loads of movies, not so many TV shows, but enough to keep you amused, even on these long haul trips. And talking of long, it was even longer due to avoiding Russian airspace. Before we knew it, we were pushing back, which gave me a chance to appreciate the airline's innovative cabin lighting, which has quite a few scenes, including sunsets, moving clouds, and night scenes too.
After takeoff, I got to grips with the bedding, which included a thin mattress cover. And I explored the toilets, which had an abstract ink painting on one of the walls, pure altitude amenities, and piped music, which added a certain something. Back in the seat, I settled in for the long flight, and my post-departure champagne and amuse-bouche was served, which was just delicious. This was followed by the starter of scallops and tuna, which was served on these gorgeous plates. It's yet another lovely design detail that creates a really cohesive brand experience. I then enjoyed this piping hot mushroom soup, followed by a delicious lobster and rice dish. Although this was nothing compared to the meal on the return flight. More of that to come on my channel soon. After this, a banquet of desserts was delivered, including a cheese plate, ice cream, and a cheesecake all washed down by one of their many herbal and Chinese teas. Just before the lunch, I was actually offered the amenity kit, which was provided in this craft paper bag. It was quite unusual to see North Face as the brand, as it's quite young and utilitarian, and feels somewhat at odds to China Airlines' more elegant brand aesthetic, but it was decent enough, featuring Spreckenhus toiletries. With the feast over, it was time to try to get some sleep. Reclining the seat, I was pleasantly surprised how firm yet giving the seat was, and the bedding was of great quality, although the pillow could have been a little bit thicker. As the rest of the cabin finished their meals, I finished my movie and tried to drift off to sleep in this very quiet A350 cabin. To help us get some shut-eye, the cabin changed through various colours, bringing us to a dark, sleep-worthy environment. For those not able to sleep on a day flight, China Airlines features a fantastic walk-up sky lounge, and although the A350 isn't as big as the 777s, it's kitted out with a variety of Taiwanese snacks, drinks, pot noodles, coffees, as well as some decent spirits and wines. But even if you don't want to walk the few meters to the lounge, you are also served treats on demand, as well as a range of anytime dishes, including these gorgeous chili pot stickers, which were so Moorish, I ended up having three servings throughout the flight. After about six hours sleep, I gradually woke up, and this was about three hours before landing. And as the rest of the cabin began to stir, we saw the lights slowly raise prior to the breakfast service, which was served approximately two hours before landing. It started with a refreshing but hot, oh so hot, hot towel, a fresh juice and a coffee of your choice, either espresso or filter, and a huge Western or Chinese breakfast. Now, I opted for the Western, which featured eggs, bacon, tomatoes, mushroom, pastries, and a fruit basket with the world's largest strawberry.
As I finished a second coffee and started contemplating our connection, I was pleasantly surprised by China Airlines. It lived up to my memories of flying with them some years ago and the product is a well-oiled luxury machine. China Airlines, in my eyes, is often overlooked and this Taiwanese carrier should be on the top of everyone's airline list. While I was dubious about making a connection with just 90 minutes, I realized upon landing there was nothing to worry about. On exiting the aircraft, there were ground crew to help us make our connections, although it seemed we were one of the only passengers connecting in business class, as we made our way to the nearest connection point in the terminal, which just took a couple of minutes, made easier by moving walkways the whole way. Within just seconds, we were through the security check, made easier by the fact we could keep everything in the bag. Just a few minutes later, we were already at the gate for our connecting flight. In fact, we even had time to spare, so we opted to go to one of China Airlines' many lounges in Taipei to grab another coffee, use a toilet, and while we didn't have any of the food options on offer, we could have easily spent some time in this lounge. This isn't even the airline's signature lounge, something we'll cover on our return flight trip report. As soon as we had had our coffee, we headed back down to the gate to get on board our 777, which was flying us to Osaka. It's just a two hour flight, but it's great to see their signature aircraft flying even on these short haul routes. Boarding was quick and the gate was filled with passengers taking pictures of this beautiful machine. As we boarded, it was clear to see that there were similarities between the newer A350 and this flagship 777, although this older cabin did feel a little darker because of a few small design touches that were a little different compared to the Airbus fleet. That said, the seats here were larger and the storage was a little bit bigger too. And even on a short haul flight like this, there were pillows and blankets on offer and the same cabin greeting was offered by the crew. Although many things felt familiar, there were differences too, including the simpler sweet lamp. Even on this short haul flight, we got hot towels. Menus were delivered, even though we opted for the pre-ordered Japanese meal.
One clear difference was the addition of the newer noise cancelling headset, which made a big difference to the entertainment experience. Although we were in a bit of a daze, before we knew it, we were pushing back, taking off, and winging our way to Japan. After takeoff, tables were laid, welcome drinks and snacks were offered, which was then followed by the meal. Which features the airline's relatively new Japanese dining ware, which is gorgeous. As well as stunning plates, the food looked incredible and tasted incredible too, including delicious pickles and a beautiful miso soup. As if that wasn't enough, it was then followed by three desserts. I mean, it really is incredible that we can get this on a flight this short, yet on European carriers, you'd be lucky to get a hot dish in business class. Before long, we were descending into Osaka and it left us mesmerized by China Airlines. It's a very underrated airline by most, but not by us. There's good reason this Taiwanese carrier won Design Airline of the Year for Asia last year. The airline keeps investing in its product and delivers a truly holistic design experience across every passenger experience touchpoint. It's an effortless design experience that surprises and delights with a little bit more color and flair than its other legacy Asian counterparts. Once again, thank you for joining us on this trip. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see our return trip on the 777, featuring the larger Sky Lounge, as well as our stay in the airline's VIP lounge in Taipei. In the meantime, safe flying.